Oh, Amsterdam. <laughs> you enjoy Amsterdam? Yeah, it's great. I've been here about uh, three, four times before, so I really like it. But coming here today is the only day I haven't actually stepped outside. I've been sitting in this box all day. You know, waiting. Well, you like the sofas, huh? Sorry, yeah, I, I like the sofas, and I like talking about myself all day. It is fantastic. Okay, could you tell me something about yourself? <laughs> something you haven't told the other journalists, actually. Um, I haven't know. I'm an intergalactic space hopper for the 21st century. That's original. So where have you been lately? Where have I been? I've just come back from San Remo. Mm. Which is, uh, we did a festival in Italy, which is really good, and it was like plus 20, and then it's minus 6 in Amsterdam, and I, I think I froze. <laughs> Could you tell me something about New Atlantis? Um, what is it? New Atlantis was a production company I set up about two and a half years ago, something like that, and I wanted to make music, but before making music, I wanted to understand how I wanted to make music. And after leaving art school, I needed to express myself visually. So we started out as an art collective. So we used to take aerial photographs of our surroundings and do geometric art. And we made a short film, you know, and did a few film? B movies. Well, it was actually called Spaceman Suborganic Mutation from the planet Zupavirus, 25.6 million light years from Earth. It was very sort of Roger Corman-esque, Invaders from Mars, you know, filmed in three days, and uh, me and a few friends with a Bolex camera. But it worked really well, and we, we might release that, you know, pretty wow. soon. So that was great, and that was the original uh, the soundtrack to that I, I did, and that was Spaceman. And then I slowly understood what I wanted to do. I wanted to combine the where the organism meets the organic. I think Babylon Zoo, where the human combines with the humanoid and the android, you know, we're right in the middle of that. So um, I wanted to sort of challenge the theory of um, our environment, prototype society. You know, we are Frankenstein, this is the monster. You know, we are living in this creation. You know that we have created. Are we finding it difficult to live in this creation? You know, challenging the whole theories. And I also don't see myself as a music politician, so I I don't tell people how to live their lives. I offer visual images and sound images, and um, people can fill in the question, the answers to the questions if they want to. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a story. Um, <laughs> I, I actually heard um, that you uh, you set up your own. Well, I say that community inside Britain. Your own world? Um, environment. Yeah, I set up um, a mini environment just just in, in, a, in a studio. Um, I wanted to see a paradise when I looked out the window, and I couldn't. So know. what is paradise, in your opinion? Paradise, for me, is where machine and man work well together, and not one takes over from the other one. So I created a mini artificial rainforest combined with... You know, a lot of machinery, you know, sub-aqua machinery. You know, I, w I produced, um, you know, an underwater world in there, you know, a mini-aqua underwater world. And I wanted it to be a paradise, you know, a paradise where, you know, everything looked like it was for the future, you know, but it didn't discard the past. So what do you... What, oh, sorry. Did you ever follow that biosphere experiment, that thing in... Where Nevada. was it? Nevada. Nevada? No, no, I didn't actually. You know, I'm, 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 you know, I don't think I was one of those biospherical kids. You know, I don't think I was one of those. But um, I think I, I, you know, I, 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 I play around with my own experiments. You know, I think it's nice to be an instigator, not a follower of ideas. So a lot of the ideas that come out are basically from the brain. So you can either take it as insanity or a genius way of looking at things. So what do you think? Both. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can be an insane genius if you want to. Um, you talked about um, uh, machines and men working together. Uh, what do you think about artificial intelligence? Um, I don't know. I think we we live we live now as as as, as the Homo sapien is artificial intelligence. You know, from the Neanderthal to now. You know, we're looking at. Um, Everything around us, inanimate objects, things that a man created, control our lives. You know, if there's a breakdown, you know, the red traffic light doesn't work anymore, there's an accident, you know, one thing stops, everything stops. So it's very automated. And I like to think about the theory of maybe underdeveloped countries 
might be ahead in the future. So what's um, so what's the superpower of the future? India, Africa? It could be. I've actually written a script at the moment. I'm, I'm going to think about working with a couple of directors who want to work with me, about making a science fiction futuristic film of India in the future. Places that haven't got the restraints, you know, places that haven't got the geometric box forms to stop them from being ahead in the future. So, so what, 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 why are you so interested in the future? Um, it's the romanticism. It's thinking. I don't like thinking about the norm, the apparent. You know, it's easy to read a newspaper, to watch television, to look outside your window and see what is out there. This is the world. You know, this is what it is. And I like to think about what's beyond that, the parallel universe. You know, is there something other life? You know, what, what, you what are we going to be in the future? There is definitely, I feel, life. You know, yeah. in and around the solar system. You know, it's just the fact that. As individuals, we we have allowed ourselves to only gain certain knowledge, and we haven't evolved, you know, enough to gather that information. So you think there are other life forms? Um, do you think uh, aliens or other life forms uh, visit our planet? Um, I think in the past there has been unidentified forms of life on this planet. It's just the matter of um, we are controlled by the media and we are, to you know, not totally controlled, but there's a lot of, you know, control that is filtered. You know, and there's a mass filtration of, of, of ideas and, 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 and existing life form. And really, I think we've got to the stage now where do we know what's right and do we know what's wrong? You know, there's a mass paranoia within the individual. We spoke to uh, to a singer of uh, American band, Jim Blossoms. He said, "Like, yeah, I think there definitely is a, a life in our space." And uh, he said, "I don't think things will really change change if aliens would like come and visit us openly." What do you think? Um, I think things will change. Yeah, you definitely. know, because I feel that you know we find it very difficult to deal with our lives our everyday lives you know if there's a new mechanism a new creation you know it's a mass shock for the individual you know i i think this going you know the internet is something that the fbi are looking into in america they are very scared of the internet this is a simple form of communication you know from one individual to another and they are frightened about that you know and you you can imagine what it would be like if there's another existing life form on this planet. How bizarre this would be for the FBI or people like those sort of you know constitutions to deal with. You know they, they would find it very difficult. I think it, it makes them lose their control, their power that they have upon us. Do you believe in a conspiracy theory that um, in in 1940-something, seven, I guess? The uh, Roswell theory. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I don't. I, 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 I personally, due to the information we've been given so far, um, you know, again, I think it's been filtered through the media to such an extent where it's actually tackified it and made it totally unbelievable. Now that is a plan. That is a plan itself. I do believe that that actually occurred, and um, but I also believe the fact that you know the information that was given out to us via the short video and via all the information on television was something that was a planned thing, was totally formulated by the FBI and totally formulated by, you know, a lot of the, the, the powers that be in that, that those countries. And it was given to us as, you can't believe this, you know, it's totally unbelievable, became fiction. You know, the information became fiction, so we wouldn't believe it. Conspiracy theory goes so deep. So you actually think that, like, um, the, 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 the technological advance that the Americans have is due to their knowledge of, well, extraterrestrial life? I think so. It can be to a certain extent. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the things where I think any, any individual, nobody can sit here and say that they know it all, you know, and um, I don't think, you know, any, any continent can. But there are certain continents that are far ahead and far superior, and that is a good thing. You know, it, it can only be a good thing that there are actual philosophers and people thinking for the future and thinking ahead. Whether their ideas are controlled by other people you know, is something that I don't know, you know. But I think it's scary that, like... It does seem apparent, you know. Like, people like Bill Gates, they, like, 
develop <coughs> software in which they uh, well put small clues so that they can gather information in your personal computer if you buy <laughs> Windows 95. See, I think this has been going on for uh, numerous years. You know, not just not just on um, you know on the in the computer system. I think it's been going on in cinema. I can remember um, reading something about uh, the Coca-Cola Corporation how they used subliminal editing in some of their films on, t uh, on the cinema screens where the only drink that was available was Coca-Cola, the subliminal editing of a glass that was a cold glass. And the, the cinema was warm, you know, the heating was on, you know, people invariably feel thirsty. You know, that has been totally eliminated now. It's illegal to have subliminal editing. So those things have gone on for a heck of a long time, and I think they still will. You know, um, I think it, it might get to the stage where a man is totally um, trying to control machinery, whereas it might get too far where the machinery controls him. So we've been uh, we went to Brussels, and there, you, there's this professor. He's working on uh, artificial intelligent robots. Mm -hmm. You've got these small machines. They're like this. Don't you think that like uh, the insects will rule Earth? Because they're bound to last. Mm -hmm. They can even last nuclear wars. Well, to me, creation, creature, animal, is anything from you know an underwater to 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 an insect. So. You know, this is the this is a true fossilization of life. You know, this is this is life as 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 we before we knew it. You know, and this might return. You know, this naturally is heading to return. Another thing, I guess uh, uh, everybody asks you this, uh, but um, uh, you you got signed b because you were discovered by a Levi's ad. How does that work? Um, that's that's not true. No. You know, it's, uh, it's 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 so far from the truth. Yeah. It's become, it, it, it's it's stranger than fiction. Uh, <laughs> no, um, basically, uh, I've been um, I've been signed to with EMI and you know with the person I'm working with for two and a half years now. So I'd finished the album, and the, the Spaceman the record was ready on white label out in the clubs, and. The directors that were working on the Levi's advert heard it on um, on the radio and wanted to use it for their visuals. And the director got in touch with me and I had a look at their visuals and I thought they were great. They're very futuristic and it's quite stylistic. I really liked it. I mean, gone in the days of the soap ad. You know, some really good directors making really good pieces now. And it worked well, the, the music with the visuals, and so we said yes. But I think... Um, Babylon's who were around a lot quicker and a lot before um, the advert was formulated. So, but I, you know, it's one of those things where I, I think um, you know, art form, music, visuals, everything—it's got to work together now. You know, the music is this like slow machine that's trying to catch up with their technology. I think you know, it's really strange that like an advert is even faster medium than radio or. MTV Airplay? Well, exactly, you know, it is. But at the same time, we're number one in 13 countries at the moment in Europe, and in a lot of those countries they haven't had the advert. So I don't think music's about arithmetic, really. It's about feeling, and if people can actually get the chance to hear something and they like it, they'll go and buy it. So yeah. actually, like, actually, <coughs> the, the medium uh, advertisement, I could call it a medium, I guess, is like just another medium next to broadcasting by, well, you say it, Big corporations. Well, that's what it is. Yes, you know that's what it is because, you know, uh, whether it's whether it's television, film, theatre, or you know, or any other form, radio, um, it, it, it it's it's presentation, it's present, it's introduction, it's the it's the genesis, it's the start for any artist, and it's a good start. You never thought that uh, about the fact that you could be linked to Levi's for the rest of your life? Um, no, not really. You know, no. I, I mean, it's like. I don't think we are, you know, and I don't think we're perceived to be, and um, we're existing as, as as musicians, you know, and and this is Babylon Zoo, and it exists as it exists, and um, you know, I don't know, you can you can tag anything you want to tag, but you know, I feel that musically I can keep five minutes ahead all the time. Um, I guess you will uh, earn loads of money now. Um, you could actually um, make your own future come true now. I probably could. I think I, uh, the one thing I want to do is work with um, 
physicists and scientists, and I want to evolve an ulterior way of transporting ourselves. So uh, I think that is my next move. And what, what are you thinking about then? Um, Beam me up, Scotty? Um, no, I want to start more manual. I want to start with gyrocopters. You know, I want backpacks. <laughs> you imagine in Amsterdam, that'd be great. Yeah. You know, bicycles and gyrocopters, that would be fantastic. <laughs> so nothing stays like, I mean, well, no. floating, floating bicycles or... No, come no. on. Well, It's like... I don't know. I, you know, it, it, maybe it is gyrocopters to me. You know, you're traveling. You're traveling just on the surface. You know, James and Bond in Amsterdam. Maybe. <laughs> 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 But next to that, I mean, you got any plans? Are you going to do for the future now? Yeah, you, you want to look ahead. Yeah, we're working on um, three CD-ROMs at the moment with three different companies, and they should be fantastic because we're going to provide fantastic visuals and great ideas. Um, I've written two scripts, two films. I'm working on that. Um, we're also going out live, playing live quite a lot, going all around the world. So it's a very busy time. You know. When will you go to the States? Um, we're going to the States in April. We go in April. Your record is already released there or not? It's coming out in the next few weeks, so it's getting... Um, What do you expect? Well, it's, it, the signs are really good in the States because we get, we're getting quite a lot of playlisting in the States already. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, it should be great. You think you'll score another number one hit? I hope so, yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to, to touring in America, you know, and um, it excites me to go there as it excites me to go around the world, you know. Uh, you experiment a lot with your music. There's a lot of different styles in there. Uh, hard, loud guitars, uh, house or techno, te techno beats. You could say that. Mm. Uh, would you ever consider like um, experimenting with other sorts of styles of music as well? Yes, I don't think there's any rules. In music, you know, if there was a rule book on music, I certainly wouldn't read it. <laughs> so I, you know, I just think it's self-expression. I'll do it any way I can, you know, and any way that feels natural. So I'll use every instrument. I can play most instruments, you know, and and I produce a lot of my music myself. So if I can go into the studio and do it myself, and I can produce, I, I've got no limitations, you know. I'll, I'll do what I want to do. You get your own studio? Yeah. No. The new Atlantis is a recording studio as well. So, wow, you were uh, earning a lot of money actually before you uh, you issued this record, I guess. Um, no, it's never a commercial studio. It was just to do my own ideas. Expensive to start a your own studio? Well, I started with hardly anything in there, you know, so it was a guitar and one machine, you know, and a drum machine, so it was very simplistic. But, you know, I think... You know, you can paint. You can paint with a, a pencil and a piece of paper. So why can't you make music with one guitar and a few couple, a couple of cheap machines? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> There's another question about your album. There are some things in it. Um, here, a small phrase. Uh, we would like to extend our thanks to all who have been involved with our movements from the outset. We hope this work is a testament to your enduring belief. Mm -hmm. Belief in what? Belief in... Uh, Babylon Zoo as being one of the most successful groups of all time in the future. And a lot of people who have worked with me have, do believe that and still believe it. And that's good, you know. It's good to have a vision and have believers with you. You actually set out to uh, to be the most successful band of all times? I think any artist, if you don't want to be successful, you shouldn't be doing it. Well, you know. Successful, okay. I mean, Oasis are pretty successful, but mm. you beat them. Yeah, I mean it's no race, you know. I'm mean, I'm not I'm not in competition with anybody. You know what I mean? Music isn't about competition. There's room for everybody. But I believe that I want my art and my music to be liked and shared with the majority, not the minority. So that invariably means successful, which is not a bad thing. What's a zodiac sign? Um, zodiac sign. Sorry, <laughs> she tells it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, what was that? <laughs> she told me in Dutch what it was. He already knew. All oh, right, <laughs> you already knew. Uh, so no, I want you to explain what, what the song is about. Yeah, the song. The song is about you know how there's this theories of uh, people living out the lives of constellations and living out the lives of this is your sign and this is your zodiac sign. This is an individual. It's a character who's the who's the sign. He's a general sign. He is. All of the Zodiac.
Uh huh. So no predestination. No. I believe. Are you a religious person? Um, no, I'm not a religious person, you know, it is in the word religion, I mean, what is religion? You know, it's one of those things where I think, um, if it is something that you should do and you shouldn't do, I think, you, as an individual, you have to work out what you can do and what you can't do, you know, and, um... Isn't religion an institutionalized form of belief? Yes, it can be. I mean, personally, you know, I think I'm more of a spiritual person, you know, I'm not really into the fact that, you know, sectionalizing life, you know, sectionalizing different people, you know, you are from this background and you are from that country and you are from, you know, I said Earth is a very small place and, um, you know, togetherness is more important to me than sectionalizing. You've been to, uh, to Amsterdam four or five times before, you tell me. Uh, you traveled a lot? Yeah, yeah, I have done in the, in the past. And um, it's important, really. I think the the better man is the man who listens and learns. So I like to travel, and I like to sort of understand other people's backgrounds and other people's cultures, other people's upbringings, because you know it, it limits you if you just think about what you are as an individual. And it helps me sort of it gives me inspiration, you know, for writing. So, what's your most inspirational place on earth next to uh, New Atlantis? Amsterdam. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. How corny is this guy? It's yeah, frightening. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, everywhere, everywhere I've been so far. I mean, it's everywhere is different, isn't it? I mean, if you travel, if somebody travels a lot, you know, it's like you you can't you can't say that this is better than that or that is better than this, you know, because every place is individual. You know, it has its own great things and you must have your preferences. Ah, uh, my preferences. I don't know. I haven't got a preference at this present moment because I don't think I've been everywhere I want to go. And until I get to that point, I'll do it and I'll come back and I'll tell you then. <laughs> I'll give you to that. <laughs> anyway, uh, are you the boy with the x-ray eyes? And that's why you're wearing diesel glasses? Mmm, great question. <laughs> no, maybe I'm the boy with the x-ray eyes. Maybe you're the boy with the x-ray eyes. It could be anybody. It is somebody who can see round corners before they walk round corners. It is somebody who sees beyond the inanimate object, beyond the wall. It is somebody who sees not just the color, the clothes, the style of the hair, you know, who sees beyond that, you know, who sees beyond the facade and sees the soul. Are you just, is, is, is Babylon, Babylon Zoo just you or are there a lot of other people? Form Babylon Zoo. Um, the way I describe it is, I am the director and producer, and the people who come and play with me are the actors who play out my alter ego. Wow. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I got to think about that for a while. Um, you didn't do the artwork yourself, huh? I sketch. I sketch everything. When I when I write a song, I sketch the song as well. And um, and when you do that, it's great because you go back and you've got 10,000 sketches, and you've got all the songs written, and it's all together, and it's nice to work with people. And then, you know, there's various friends of mine who I was at art college with uh, who who really understand, you know, who can really translate a lot of those ideas and put in great input themselves. So it's an ongoing process. When will you play live in Holland? Um, we'll be playing in March in Amsterdam. Where play? Um, The Milky Way. Wow. 